Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. Sam and Doug finished the brakes on the Alpha 1 GTO by installing a new master cylinder and bleeding the entire system. The brake system on this car has gone a long way since the project first started. All of these upgrades will ensure that the car stops as fast as it looks. Doug and I have already replaced all the brake system on this GTO project. What we're going to do next, and you don't want to skip this step, is going to be the master cylinder. In our case, this is original to the car since 1978. Yeah, so it's real important to be able to do it. We're also going to go ahead and put in a, a proportioning valve so we can make sure the brake bias between the front and the rear are correct. You don't want the rears to lock up before the front. You want everything to work together. Yep, this is going to be very easy. Make sure you guys use a line wrench. This is a direct replacement unit from Willwood for the Nissan chassis, so it's going to work out really great. Whenever you guys are working on a brake system or even a hydraulic clutch system, they're going to take brake fluid. Brake fluid is very corrosive when it touches paint, so make sure you cover anything up that you may get exposed to brake fluid, and if you get it on there, wipe it off really fast and you should be okay. Make sure you're using a line wrench onto it. You can see that the gap into it. What that'll allow you to do is to go right around that line. If you use just a standard wrench, you stand a real good chance of rolling your edges and then you're going to have some real difficulties trying to take it off. What Sam's going to do with the bench bleeding, it's, it'll really help you out. You go ahead and put brake fluid into it and then you go ahead and bleed your master cylinder ahead of time before you do the lines and that'll save you a lot of time. Otherwise what happens is you're putting fluid into the master cylinder and you're trying to bleed the whole system at once and you've got to go ahead and pump it all the way down. You've got a, a piston uh, moving down a cylinder and you want to just pre-fill everything and then bleed it first then put it in and then it makes bleeding the system go much faster and easier. Okay, what we're getting ready to do right now is to bleed the brake. So what Sam's gonna be doing is watching the amount of brake fluid that's in the bowl. And so I'm gonna be adding pressure to it. So I'm gonna be pumping the brake. And as I pump the brake, then I'm gonna hold it down. And then Sam's gonna crack the valve. And then he's gonna close the valve. And then I'm gonna go ahead and then do another couple pumps. And then I'll hold it back all the way down. And we're wanting to bleed all of the air out of the system. And it's important you always start with the line that's farthest away in the back and then work your way forward. There is vacuum pumps out there. You can hook up the air and suck the fluid through. If you didn't have a bench bleeding kit, that's something I highly recommend because it'll cut your bleeding in half. But I always recommend at the end you do one manual pumping like we do here because it just at the end works better. Well, Doug, you know, this isn't a very difficult job, but it's always a time-consuming job. When you install suspension upgrades or a brake upgrade, you really got to think things through, do it right, do it once. No, I agree, Sam, and I'm so satisfied with everything that we've done here. I mean, with the coilover suspension, we're able to go ahead and dial in the spring rates, the ride heights onto it. We have full adjustability in the A-arms, the large brakes. I mean, everything about this build, it looks fantastic. Uh, you know, years ago, I was coming down a hill, coming real hard got into the brakes and I started to lose them. I don't need to worry about any of those things happening on this vehicle. I mean, I'm, I'm really, really satisfied with what we've done. The good thing is that everything we installed is purpose built. We got thrust angle adjustment in the back, camber caster adjustment in the front toe, everything. For, you can really set this thing up on the racetrack for yourself. Yeah, and, and for you guys at home, when you're doing a build like this, remember, think your way all the way through the car. If you're putting a lot more power onto it, make sure you're building the proper suspension and the proper brakes. The last thing you want to do is get yourself into trouble make sure whatever you're doing make sure you're doing it safe absolutely if you guys are building yourself a project make sure that you don't build a street car for the racetrack and a race car for the streets